Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC, and today I'm going to be checking out the Hobbymate Comet VX220. This is a 5 inch model and it is available from Hobby Cool. Now, I have worked with Hobby Cool in the past, they are a supplier of the multi protocol jumper transmitter, and I've always had a good experience with those. They've come up with this 5 inch model, and I really like what they've done with it actually. Now they did send this to me as a prototype so there were some issues with it. For example the camera was connected directly to the VTX so it missed out the on-screen display. I've talked to them about that and they are making sure that that is fixed you know to release the full potential of smart audio and Betafly on-screen display and that but yeah, that doesn't really matter if you buy this guy as a kit because at the making of this video, you can buy all of this as a kit for $179 or something like that. And I think that is really interesting, you know, recently I've been looking at these $100, $99 builds and it really does show you that it is worth spending an extra $70 to get what we've got here is a top spec model I would say and they also offer it as a bind and fly and a plug and fly and you can get it with a XM plus receiver which is this one or an RXSR and of course those are more expensive around about the $200 range but I really think it's worth spending the extra money and I've been really impressed with this one actually. So let's take a look at the specifications. So the motors are the RC in power. They are a 2305. I would have preferred a 2306 myself because I've got those on my freestyle copter and they have got plenty of oomph. However, RC Empower, they're one of my favorite motors at the moment. They are really smooth and I think they're going to perform well on this guy. You can see they've worked with Hobbymate here and there is also a version with a 1800 kV I think. So if you want to go in 6S, I'd just like to go 4S myself just to be straightforward. But yeah, very good quality motor. We've got the hollow shaft there. We have got the naked bottoms, but it's got a lip on it to stop the wires getting caught there. And we've got a hex screw underneath there to get any of the mud out. The frame and build quality of this is just really impressive. And we've got nice quality carbon. Here we've got some recessed screws underneath for your battery. One thing that it didn't come with was a silicon mat, which I was a bit disappointed with. And it also didn't come with a battery strap. So, sorry Hobby Cool, but this is the only one that I got left. Maybe blur that out or something. <laughs> yes, so yeah, this one came built like this and I don't have many issues with it whatsoever. I suppose this could be a potential problem so it's come with a Foxeer lollipop antenna again great quality antenna and it's on the top so you know if you have a crash like that then you know it's it's gonna get knocked off but it is on a extension cable and it's NMCX so that's not too bad that's easily replaceable I guess and you're gonna get the best reception with it up here just don't do what I did on the test flight which you will see I left it upright like that so when I'm in forward flight you get terrible reception I think I landed because I needed to change the PID so I put it in that back position and then yeah I was getting decent results so the stack really impressive they are 32 bit with telemetry they are 35 amp and this was just all set up the soldering is just really neat something I thought was interesting is it's not gonna show on here but they actually put some copper over the top of the ESC's there for shielding one thing they've done which I don't really like is in there somewhere is an XM plus and I really like what they've done here with the antennas it all came like this but it meant that it was difficult to get to the XM plus and I was using a hex driver to try and 
press the button down, which isn't great when you've got all of these components here. It's best to take it all apart and to bind it, but you know what, it fits in there neatly, so once you've got it bound, it's not going to be a problem, but yeah, a bit of a pain to get this one bound here. So moving up, and we have got a very decent F4 flight control. It's actually got a couple of breakouts if you want to use a separate isolated IMU, but it's using the built-in one here. Now this didn't have any setup whatsoever, however I am told that it's going to have full setup on there for the customer. So just stock settings here for this one and I think yeah I had to do a full setup on that so I won't go through that but you can do D shot 1200 of course because of the 32 bit and yeah I think I went to 8k 8k on there just for this flight there and then the VTX is a switching VTX from 0 milliwatt all the way up to 600 milliwatt it is using the tramp protocol and it works very nicely and the camera up the front is the Foxeer Arrow it's a CCD camera one of my favorites so if we take a look at what you get in the box they actually haven't thrown away all of the stuff they've used so you get the box for the Foxeer camera and that is so you can mess around with the camera settings it's also the one that has got the on-screen display as well so I did have to turn that off so be aware of that if you end up with two on-screen displays we've got all of the information for the VTX if you don't want to use the smart audio and things like that but you know I would just use that these days and yeah do away with the button it does have a built-in microphone as well and it performs pretty nicely actually yeah it's showing you how to set up the tramp and everything the ESC telemetry is on the UART 4 so I had to enable all that but I did get it all working so yeah for the price this thing has got loads of features I didn't get given any props I don't know if it's because of prototype or what but yeah I am using I think these are a DAL prop and I think they're fairly high pitch they are a 50-50 so that might actually be a little bit overkill for a 2305 but we'll see what kind of power I can get out of it and let's see what else we have got so it's got information detailing the ESCs so it says they're the Typhoon 32-bit V2 and it's got all of the pinouts and things which is quite nice I think I received two of those for some reason I don't know if they've done an updated one and then the flight controller as well so you know I imagine you get all of this anyways when you build it but uh, yeah pretty impressive documentation it's got everything on there you need it's usually more than you get with a bind and fly but I guess if you buy the kit then you're gonna need all of this to build it we've got the XM plus instructions there as well and this is the box that it came in fully built they have kept the motor boxes here just as padding so it really does look like this one has been hand built and it's been hand built very well I would say uh, we do have a screw going through the arms onto the stack but they have soft mounted it here so hopefully no vibrations will come through yeah, so it weighs 306 grams without a battery and 498 grams with a 1500 GMB 4S battery, which I'm going to be using, which is quite lightweight, I would say. So, yeah, for the price of this, I have to say I am pretty impressed. You just need your battery strap, your silicon mat to stop it flinging off. And, of course, you need... A transmitter you need FPV goggles you need a charger and a battery but I guess that goes without saying so let's get and see how this thing performs all right so let's take a look at some DVR footage so this flight was taken with the Sun 
gone down just like with the terror but you can see the camera just performs so much better now the speed run the first one only showed 91 mile per hour and this is with a stock tune and as you might be able to hear I'm getting some determ oscillations lots of flutter and that will affect the top speed you can also see that the video is breaking up that's my fault I got the antenna pointing straight up so of course when the copter's in fully forward flight then we lose picture so I try and get a little bit of space here because it does feel like this thing can go much faster so a bit of space here and yeah the speed trap isn't picking up properly because this thing has just got a huge amount of power and I'm really pleased with how clean the video is as well so what I decide to do is bring it in for a landing and play around with those D gains because these were just stock beta flight settings which are designed for a GoPro so you know it's expecting a heavier copter when it is lighter so I went into the PID profile and just brought down the D's it was a lot better but still not quite right so I hope they put a decent tune on this but let's check out the speed 92 mile per hour I still think I'm going out of reach of the speedo there I think it's going faster than that once it's gone out of the field of view of the speed timer so I'm trying to get more space here and full throttle 103 mile per hour that is what I was expecting that is what I was feeling from the sticks but it just was not coming through to the speedo so there you go this is a fast copter and you know for just what $79 more than the Terro, the Tyro and the STX225 this thing is just so much better in fact I think with a decent tune on there it could definitely compete with the likes of the Emacs Hawk 5 and maybe undercut it in price although I've seen some people say oh I could get the Emacs Hawk 5 for $188 or something like that it's still showing above 200 for me but you know this is an example when you spend $79 more than those budget ones and you pretty much got a top end racer that's doing 100 mile per hour and it's full of features like the smart audio and we've got a current meter on here as well we've got our ESC info so you know at the top right there we have got the temperature of the ESCs and we've also got the RPM as well so yeah pretty impressed with what you get for your money with this one and if you want to spend a little bit more and get the bind and fly version the quality and the way that they have built it is superb of course when we start getting into that pricing then you are competing with the likes of the Coppice 2 and the HLRC Batman I think it's up there with those it flies nice and smooth then we've got like a three minute flight time there so yeah I will link it in the below if you wish to get one and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers